Hi everyone. I wanted to do a real quick video to kind of explain my process when I was going through um, the VR nano degree from Udacity. Um, it was sort of a system that I developed probably about halfway through the course and I feel like it would have saved me a whole bunch of time if I would have known then um, what I know now. So I thought I would share with you guys um, my process and how I uh, how I went through all of the projects for the second half of the nano degree. Um, rather than watching all of the content going through all of it piece by piece, I basically jumped forward to the project that I had to do. And I would open up the project rubric and as I watched bits and pieces of the course, I'd go back to the beginning and I would watch a video and then I would go back to the rubric and I'd go down my list and I'd see which things applied to the content that I just learned. If there was nothing that was in, in the video that I watched, then I would go on to the next video or the next section. Um, if there was something in the video that applied to a line in the rubric, then I did it then. Um, what I found is if I watched all of the videos first and then started the project, I would always have to go back and re-watch videos. And to me that seemed like it was very redundant uh, because I, I would forget exactly which video mentioned which steps. And so going back to the rubric in between each video and actually doing the steps in Unity um, made it a lot more concrete for me. Um, it also made it very obvious um, as I was watching the video what needed to be done in the project compared to what was just being shown to kind of illustrate concepts. Um, I know that Udacity has on UdacityVR.com um, their list of downloads. Um, they usually have um, course material, like your course assets, um, so that people that like to follow along with the videos, um, that's there for them to kind of play with. Um, but for me, I didn't really get a whole lot of use out of that. I felt like I learned a lot more by watching a video and then implementing that concept in the project. So I'm going to um, kind of show you a little bit what I mean. So that way you kind of have an idea of what I would normally do. Um, so like here's our Udacity Carnival project. Um, and this is a project that I didn't do because when I went through it, the first project was different. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, so I see that the recommended version for that project is 2017.2. Um, and the GVR version is 1.70. Um, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to download this Unity package just in case I need to import it in the project. Um, I've also already downloaded the Udacity Carnival Starter Project. Um, so just to be sure, I'm going to um, extract this to um, a folder. Let's make a new folder. Carnival project. And we'll put it right here. And extract. So this is going to take a minute to extract the whole project. And I've already got 
um, this particular version of Unity already downloaded. So when I go to actually open it, um, I can, let's see, it's still extracting. Um, Unity Hub will let me choose the exact version of Unity that I want to um, to open it with. So you can see I've got multiple versions of Unity here already installed. Um, so when I finish, and it looks like it already finished for me, um, when I finish I can just tell Unity Hub I want to open it in 2017.2 and it will open up with that version. Um, let's see, so I put it right here. And I want to open with this particular version. So it's 2017.2, and I'm going to open it. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to find a, I guess, a good video that we can kind of start. Um, I don't think this is all just informational stuff. Again, just informational stuff. So let's go with our Hello World here. Um, I've already got my Unity account set up. Um, this is just a brief kind of overview of the Unity interface. Opening an existing Unity project, which is something that I'm already doing, um, by extracting it and then opening it within Unity, and it's still working. So like this one is customizing the Audacity Carnival project. So using my strategy, I would watch the video, I would read everything on this page, and then I would go to the reviews, and I would figure out what in this particular page applies to the review section. And maybe having this full screen is not necessarily the best. So let's try pulling it side by side. So this kind of gives us a really good side by side view of what needs to be in the project. Um, so this is the first part here is just saying that we need a readme in the file. that we end up submitting. So I see that I've already got this readme right here. I can close like everything else out of here that we don't need. That's, oh, no, I don't want to save that. Thank you very much. No, I don't need to save that either. Um, so essentially, this would be um, the file that I would edit and put in anything that needs to be here. Um, let's see, so my assets folder would need to be submitted, my project settings, all of that would need to be submitted when I actually go to submit. So my assets and my project settings, everything else like this library and this temp um, and Unity Asset or Unity Package Manager, that would all get deleted when I submit. So right here, just saying that those would get deleted. Um, so I'm making sure that I'm using the recommended versions, right? Unity 2017.2, GVR 1.70. And we, can, we see that we've got it inside our Unity. Um, just to make sure that we're using the correct version, let's clear our console. Open up our scene. 
go to our console here and hit play. Uh, okay, normally um, the GVR will print a message in the console here um, with the version that you're using. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that the project that is just our starter project already has um, the good, let's see, maybe it's near about, there we are. Um, apparently in this version, it doesn't print anything to the console, but in other versions, it definitely does. Um, so again, to get here, just Google VR at the top and then about Google VR and it'll open this. So I can see that I'm using the recommended version of 1.70. So let's see. So I know that this one's good. So we've already got a readme file already in the project, right? That was this file that Udacity had set up. Uh, and it says we need to specify the version of GVR and Unity that we used. So essentially I can leave most of this but right here, I'm going to change it to be 2017.2. Uh, and more specifically, I'm using 0F3. So I'm going to add that here as well. 0F3. And my GVR Unity SDK is right there. So now I'm going to go here down to the next section. So here's just saying. Um, personalize the scoreboard text. So if I go back to this page, I'm pretty sure that I remember seeing something about changing text. Right? Adding your name. So I would look at this and figure out, okay, what am I supposed to change? And, and I see that it used to be Udacity scores, but it wants me to put my first and last name there instead. So it shows me exactly what I need to do. So I can go back into Unity and figure out, let's see, it's right here. Title, Udacity scores. Pretty sure it wants my full name with scores at the end. Must be my own first and last name. So I'm going to zoom in, and since my name is kind of long, I'm also going to um, kind of maybe scale it down a little bit just to make sure that it fits and it's not that was unexpected. Undo, undo. No idea where my text went. So let's keep undoing until maybe it comes back. Or not. Well then, I am just going to redo some of this since I have no idea where that went. I remember it was kind of a blue color. So we'll leave it like that. What what in the world is happening here? That's fun. Ah the end of my box is like way down there. Scale. Interesting. I have no idea why that does that. So I'm going to try one more time, and I'm, this time I'm not going to like change the scale since apparently that doesn't really like me very much. Text. Yeah, 
fix it so that it's blue. I'm not going to mess with the scale, although I really want to. No idea why it's doing that. Font size. There we go. Let's do 2.5. Yeah. 2.5. Okay. There. Alright, so I'm going to save as I go. So I'm just hitting Control S on a Mac. That would be Command S. So I've already done this one. And now I would continue going down to see. And look at that, I already did that without even looking at this rubric. I already aligned my, my scoreboard text. So essentially that is my process and um, that is how um, I was able to get through the nano degree as quickly as I have been. Um, I would essentially limit myself to a maximum of three unique fun things that I wanted to do for every project um, because I found that as you're working on something there's all these cool ideas that end up coming to you like oh I can add this and I could add this and this would be really cool and I'm already doing it this way I could always just you know add this too and to you have to kind of minimize that if your if your goal is to get through the content as quickly as possible um, you have to kind of balance that out somehow find something that you're happy with but also continuing to make process make progress towards completing that um, so anyway I hope this was helpful um, let me know what you think bye